Hey YouTube, welcome to video number three of my 14 day challenge. Today I'm gonna to be talking about good old Gutenberg for WordPress 5.0. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen this tweet that I tweeted almost a week ago. I was not feeling Gutenberg and I hadn't really played around with it too much. I know a lot of you are like, Lisa, you're the creative website girl. Like, why didn't you cover this last year? 2018, I had a lot going on, y'all. Cut me some slack. And I really just wasn't in the mood to learn it. But this week, I sat down and I forced myself just to learn the basics. And I have to say, after getting used to it, there are some things I like about it. But if you don't want to use Gutenberg and you installed 5.0 and you're like, I wanna go back, there is an option and I'm gonna show you what you can do. But I think it's worth learning, I really do. I think you just have to get used to it and a lot of times we just don't like change. Trust me, I get it. So what I'm gonna do in this video is basically create the type of video that I wish I had had a week ago just covering the basics so you can at least move around and do the things, a lot of the things that you were used to doing with the old editor. But if you don't wanna play around with this, there is a plugin called the WordPress Classic Editor and it's the official plugin from WordPress that's gonna get support through 2022. So if you don't wanna learn Gutenberg until 2022, you got three years. So you can install this plugin and it's gonna basically put in the old editor that you're used to. So if you installed and you were like, I don't want this, download the plugin and you'll be good to go. So the first thing you need to know about Gutenberg is that it's a block-based editor. So that basically means every time you enter information into the editor, you're basically putting it inside a block. And each block has its own settings that you can adjust. So when you first open up a new page or a post, you're gonna see this ad title. This is your H1. This is an important tag for search engines. If you wanna put your title here, it's gonna be surrounded by the H1 tag, just like normal. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do, there's a couple of things you can do here. You wanna create a new block for your content or images or whatever. You can either hit enter, or you can bring your mouse here or up here to add a new block. I like to do enter, it just seems to work faster for me. So let's just create a few blocks. Two, three, four, now I'm gonna purposely do this out of order. And now I have six blocks that I can work in. Now, if you wanna edit the settings for the individual blocks, you just click inside the block. And there are two things you really wanna note here. Up above here, you've got some paragraph settings that you can adjust. So if you wanna change this to, let's just say a header two, then you can click that and then you can also choose header three, four. So if you wanna go back to paragraph, just click and you're back at the paragraph. So you can left align, center align, or right align the information in this block. Also over here on the right, there are some more settings. And one thing you wanna get used to with Gutenberg is whether you're using a block or even some of the widgets, typically the additional settings, once you activate the block or widget, they're going to appear on the right side. So here are some other additional settings for this block that is active. So you can change your text, from small to normal to medium to large to huge, <laughs> like that, huge. You can drop the caps. So if you wanna do a drop cap where you have that first letter of the word is large, I kinda like that effect with blogging. And then there's some color settings for your block. So if you wanna change the background color and then the text color, and what I like about this, they warn you if your color combination might be hard to read. I mean, some of that's kind of common sense, but it's kind of nice that they do that for people that might want to get a little too crazy with the colors. So that's how you format a block. Those are the basics. One feature that I really do like is that you can arrange your blocks with ease. So if you're typing a blog post and you go, you know what, I really want that paragraph to be on top of this one. Rather than having to cut and paste the text or whatever, all you have to do is hover your mouse on the left side of the block and you can see these move up and down arrows. If you wanna move block five above block six, then all you do is click this arrow and it moves it in place. And so you can move your blocks around with ease. Now, one of the things you might be missing is the classic editor. That's the editor that has the bar with the bold, italics, all that. If you miss that, one way to get that back is hit the plus to add a block. Notice when you hit the plus, you get your most used elements up here at the top, which is kind of handy. Come down here to formatting and then choose classic. 
So what it's gonna do is bring up the classic editor that you're used to. So if you type here, you can select the text and go bold, italics. This is what we're sort of used to seeing with WordPress. So it's nice to still have that classic editor bar still built into Gutenberg. I guess they realized some of us might miss this. And so it's good to see this here. So what about deleting blocks? This wasn't intuitive to me at first. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do it with the mouse or you can do the keyboard shortcut and I'll show you both. So if you wanna delete a block with the mouse, you select it and come over here to this menu option and click remove block and it gets rid of it. The other way is you can use a keyboard shortcut Gutenberg has a lot of keyboard shortcuts and I'll show you how to bring those up. So if you're on a Mac, the way to delete a block is you do control option Z and the block goes away. If you're on Windows, it's shift alt Z. So if you happen to be reading a tutorial or watching a video and the person is using a Mac, but you're using Windows or vice versa, and they don't tell you how to use the shortcut for your system. One thing to remember is that control is equivalent to shift and option is equivalent to alt. So if somebody says control option H for a Mac, that's just shift alt H for Windows. Just kind of remember that and that'll help you if somebody's not telling you what your shortcut is. Now, if you wanna bring up all the shortcuts for Gutenberg on your computer, the shortcut for that on a Mac is control option H and it brings up all your shortcuts. And if you're on Windows, that's shift alt h and so you can scroll through here and you know pick up some more keyboard shortcuts if you're a keyboard shortcut person you're really gonna like gutenberg because some people prefer to work with shortcuts because it is faster once you learn them now there are two features in the layout menu that i wanted to call up that i really like because unless you had a builder like thrive or a really good theme that had all these customizable options it was very difficult to do these two things unless you knew css and that is creating columns and adding buttons so gutenberg makes that really really easy so if you want to add a column you just come over here to your plus and then notice it's in my little most used section because i've been using that but if you come down here to layout elements and click columns notice that gutenberg is going to give you two columns by default so you can write text in this column and then you can write text in the other column and it'll automatically put your text side by side like that, which is very, 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 very helpful. So let's get rid of these and let's put two buttons side by side. So what you would do is hit the plus and then go down to the layout elements window again and then choose button. And here you can add the text to your button. So we'll just title it button one. And this is where you insert the URL that the button is gonna click to. And then you click the arrow for apply and then over here, you can do the same thing. I'll use my most used feature there. And I'm gonna type, oops, button two, and then add the URL. So just like that, I now have two buttons side by side. Again, if you had a free theme or have a free theme that doesn't have a lot of features, this would have been difficult to do. You know, so I really appreciate the fact that they make it super easy to add buttons. Now the buttons have their own set of options over on the right. Like I said before, when you activate certain elements, it creates the settings menu over here on the right side. So as you can see, you can change the background of the button. And once again, it tells you and warns you, hey, this color option you have here might be difficult to read. Although I don't know how orange and white would be difficult to read, but whatever. So you can change the, the color of the text and also you can change the style of the button up here. So if you'd rather have a square button, you can click that and change the look of the button. Now I really like what they did with images. So now you can drag images right into the editor and Gutenberg will automatically put that image into your media library. So you can just drag an image from your computer and drop it right in there and boom, it's in your post. So you don't have to worry about adding the media and all that type of stuff. And once again, the settings for the image are on the right side. So the theme for Gutenberg is everything is basically set up in blocks. And anytime you add something to your block, there will be settings on the right side. So once you sort of get used to that, it really does make this a lot more intuitive. So if you want to add a link to your image, that will be down here over here on the settings for the image. Remember, insert something into the block, look for the settings on the right side. Now the feature I really, really love about Gutenberg, and this is long overdue, is the ability to add code to your post without breaking the theme. With the old editor, if you would add code to the HTML editor, a lot of times it would break 
or the code would be changed automatically. So you'd have to use a plugin so that wouldn't happen. Well, with Gutenberg, they fixed that. So if you click the plus sign, go to formatting and hit code, and then you can paste or write your code here and you don't have to worry about the code getting messed up at a later time. And you don't have to switch or toggle back and forth between HTML and visual. Love that. Another new feature that I really, really like is the spacer. Have you ever been putting together a post and you wish you could have a defined amount of space between two elements? So rather than like trying to hard code some returns or paragraph marks in there, now you can set up a determined amount of space between two blocks. So you just hit the plus, go down to layout elements and choose spacer. And now you can just drag this little handle and it controls the amount of space that you have between your blocks. So this is really, really good for spacing out different elements on your page. I love this. Now, if you're like I was a week ago when I was trying to install my podcast widget on my blog post, I was like, where are my widgets that used to have the little shortcut on the editing bar? Well, they are down in their own category. So you hit the plus and you go down here to widgets and you should find all of your widgets at least that are compatible with Gutenberg. So for example, if I wanna add Pat Flynn's smart podcast widget to my post, I would just click this and then once again, over on the right are my settings. So for this particular plugin, I have to hit edit short code, and this is what I'm used to seeing. So I fill all this out and bam, I've got my podcast player inserted into the post. So if you're looking for other embeds like video and that kind of thing, it's in the embed section. So if you wanna embed a YouTube video or a tweet, this is where you do all that. One of the things I neglected to mention when I was talking about adding blocks are the three shortcuts in each block. So every time you add a block, you have a shortcut to the button, you have a shortcut to the heading, and you have a shortcut to images. So you can also add an image, heading, and button to your blocks very quickly by using these three shortcuts over here. Once you get used to just these features that I've outlined here, I think you'll really be more comfortable with Gutenberg. There's a whole lot to learn. There's a whole lot I haven't learned, but I think this video should help you just get going so you can at least use it and feel somewhat comfortable with it. I'll see you guys in day four.